All right, let's see. Now we get to dive into tonight's question. How do I know when my painting is finished? All right, guys, I wanna hear from you. Who here struggles with knowing when your painting's finished? Is this just a lagging question for you? Are you always wondering, oh, I'm finished with this yet? I wanna know, I wanna hear from you. So is this something you deal with? Many artists do. Uh, this is the million dollar question, right? How do you know when you're done with your painting? So let me paint a picture for you. Uh, you're finishing your painting. You think you're finishing your painting. You're feeling directionless and you just keep slapping paint on the canvas. You're mixing colors. You're not even sure why. Your, your brush is caked with paint and you don't want to clean it or freshen up your palette because you think you're almost done but then all of a sudden you step back and you look at your painting and you realize that it looked better before you sat down right like it it just isn't reading fresh it's not vibrant anymore and you've lost the the purpose of it and you don't know where you lost it and you're not sure why and you just keep repeating this overworking process anybody here struggle with that um, you're not alone. This is something that really is a challenge. And I call this overworking your painting. I mean, it's, it's exactly what it is. And the key to not overworking your painting is to know and trust the process. All right. So there are tips and procedures and a process that you can go by so that you don't have to struggle with is my painting finished and how do I know? If you don't have the tools to know this, how would you ever answer it, right? So you might be like, sure, Jen, you know the process. So like, how are we supposed to know the process? All right, I'm gonna share with you a three-step process to helping, helping you determine when your painting is finished, all right? And how to analyze it before you've overworked it. Okay, you guys following with me here? I see a bunch of you have definitely uh, overworked paintings or have struggled with that. It's, um, everybody does it and it's easy to do. All right, so get your pens out. Step one. The first thing you're gonna do is before you even start your painting, you're gonna set your sight on the goal, all right? What do you want your painting to look like in the end? How do you envision your piece? Is it going to be a bright and happy piece? Or is it going to be dark and moody? And do you want it to be loose and expressive or tight and rendered or looking more classical and old school, modern? Have a vision in your head before you start. All right, now I don't mean brushstroke for brushstroke that you're gonna, you're gonna know this is your final brushstroke. Um, frankly, I think that's <laughs> ridiculous. So I want you to be, um, comfortable with the concept of what your painting is going to look like in the end, all right? It's very important to have this just kind of held in your mind's eye so that you know what you're aiming for. How can you know if you've arrived if you don't know what you're aiming for, right? All right, so number two is resist the urge to, to paint over something that you already know looks good. All right, sometimes I think what we do is we get in and we find like this comfort zone in the painting and we know it already looks good, but we don't know what else to paint and we did that well last time. So we might as well just keep putting paint in that same spot. Don't do that. You're about to put paint on something. You know that section's already good. It, it can be finished that way. Stop, stop yourself, put your brush down and walk away. All right. Um, I go more in depth on this in my free painting guide. Um, and it's called three must know tips for painters. If you haven't downloaded that yet, I want you to grab your copy, sign up on my artist email list. I'll be connecting with you and, uh, it will go more into depth on how to resist the urge to paint over something that looks good. So, um, let's see here. Actually, I'm going to add the links to the comment here, um, to the comments. Um, Jared, if you could put the link to the free PDF, the painting guide, that would be really helpful. So go ahead and, and grab that link. It's going to be posted right here in the comments and, uh, go ahead and do it right away and then hop back into my live here so that you don't miss anything. 
And uh, that's gonna go more into depth on that second tip for how to know when your painting's finished. All right, let's see. I'm seeing some comments here. Um, yes, let's see, Cameron, especially with landscapes. Uh, Sean is here. Hey, Sean, good to see you. And Jared, thank you for posting the uh, guide. Um, go ahead and find that there. Oh, I see two different Jared. So I was actually talking to Jared uh, Brandon. Thank you for posting it. And I see Jared, who I answered your questions earlier, also posted the link. So that's awesome. Thank you, both of you, Jareds. <laughs> that's fantastic. All right. I also want to know, is anybody a tea drinker over coffee? Very curious. I'm drinking chai tea tonight and it's very delicious. All right, so here's your third tip, ready? Before you're finished with your painting or before you can know you're finished with your painting, I want you to sit back and assess. All right, easier said than done because we get caught up in like in the painting, right? We're just there, we're close to it and we just keep painting and painting and painting. Hopefully you're having a good time. Sometimes you're frustrated and you continue in that mode too. And it's almost like you're stuck to it. You're like addicted to painting poorly in that moment. I want you to, again, put your brush down, sit back, assess it, literally walk away, go in a different room, look at something different and come back fresh. I also want you to slow down. This is not the fast and furious part of your painting. This is the time to be very thoughtful and deliberate. You want to look at your reference, a good majority of your time and paint with deliberate brush strokes. All right, these are your finishing strokes. Assess your painting, what needs work, what isn't resolved, what is following my original goal and what isn't. All right, you want to you want your piece to tell the story that you envisioned from the beginning. So, Sometimes when we come back with fresh eyes, we're able to really see uh, what's standing out is incorrect and what is working. And then make sure you don't do step two and work into uh, the parts that already look good. You wanna leave those alone. So if you want that loose, expressive feeling, you're not gonna go into details in the background. You're just not. You're gonna say, no, I want this loose and expressive and my underpainting shows that, all right? So you really have to have the discipline to know when to stop, maybe when to walk away from the night for the night or the week and then come back fresh. And uh, this will help you not overwork and it will also help you assess with fresh eyes if it completes your goal for your painting. And then you can be done, you sign it and you move on. And that's how you can know when your painting's finished, all right? Sometimes I will live with a finished painting for two weeks and I will just sit with it and make sure that it does meet all the criteria that I had intended for that painting. Because occasionally you'll just come back and something will stand out and you'll just be like, ah, that's right. That, that isn't saying what I wanted this piece to say. And so you can go and correct it. But for those perfectionists out there, I don't want you to take two weeks to do that. I want you to live with it for a little while and really strongly resist the urge to work into something that's good, all right? You wanna leave what's good. Understated can be beautiful, all right? Please hear me. Understated can be beautiful. You don't need to overwork the crap out of your paintings, all right? Just let the paint speak for itself. Let it be simple and beautiful at times. And I think sometimes we overcomplicate it and I don't know why we tend to do that, but we do. All right. So I, that, that covers all three tips for how to know when your painting's finished. Um, I want to just check here real quick. All right. There are five questions as well. I'm checking my notes here because I don't want to forget to tell you this. Um, there are five questions you can ask yourself if you're still having struggles uh, knowing when your painting's finished. And those questions are in that free painting guide that Jared linked to earlier. Um, babe, if you could please throw that link in the comments again uh, so people can grab it if they didn't earlier, that would be really helpful. Let's see, Katie is asking, Kate, I'm sorry, Kate or Katie? 
Do you recommend setting it aside for a day before reassessing or even a week? Um, I, I usually, okay, so I have my canvas set up on my easel uh, where I can see it from the door that I walk by my studio. It's in my home studio. So I like to glance in while I'm walking by and um, see it from like a room's distance. And that helps me get some really good perspective on it. You can also use a mirror to see things um, flip. Sometimes that will let the uh, kind of the flaws be more glaring. But I think oftentimes I want you guys to not overwork it. So don't get too caught up in overanalyzing it. This exercise is really to help you not overwork it. All right. So. You can, uh, you can leave it for a week. I, I don't think you need to not look at it for a week. That seems a little long to me. I like to spend time with it, but come back many times with fresh eyes. All right, I hope that answers that question for you. All right, so grab your guide. Also, real quick, because I think I lost some of your, con your comments here. Um, shoot me a, a comment again to tell me if you entered to win this contest, this giveaway, all right, for the original watercolor. I, for some reason, am not getting your comments. So I'm so sorry to make you do this again. Uh, jot down your name and say, Jen, I entered to win your giveaway. And uh, we're going to pick a winner. Let's see here. I want to make sure you guys have a chance to say it again, because many of you entered and it's, I want you all to have a fair go at it. Um, bear with me here for one second. All right, so <laughs> I can't find your comments. All right, some of you are coming on here. If you've entered to win, you followed the two steps, uh, comment below that you're here, your name, and that you entered to win, all right? And I'm gonna just show you real quick what you're winning. As, as your comments are coming in, and we're going to pick one of you to have this original sketch out of, it's really hard to see this here. <laughs> also, if you didn't get a chance, uh, hop into one of my previous posts, and you get to see actually the creation of this, which is kind of fun. Uh, you get to see the brush I use, which is a Rosemary and Company um, watercolor brush. It's called a dagger brush and it's a uh, plein air painting brush. It's awesome. I'll try to grab it next week to show you. Um, it just like um, breaks down into a really small brush and then you extend it. It's a beautiful, beautiful brush for these sketches. So I highly recommend it. All right. I see a bunch of the entries here. This is so exciting. Cool. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? All right, and the winner is Lauren Day. Am I pronouncing your name right? Congratulations, you've won this watercolor sketch right from my sketchbook, and I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you entered. Congratulations, everybody give Lauren a congratulations, and I hope the rest of you have better luck next week. I wish I could give you all something. Um, but I'm going to keep doing some giveaways, some really great ones. So I really hope to see you here next week as well. Before you leave, I just want to, I want to share with you like my favorite art quote ever. All right. It's from, uh, Neil Gaiman and here it, here it is. Go and make interesting mistakes, make amazing mistakes, make glorious and fantastic mistakes break rules, leave the world more interesting for you having been here, make good art. So I hope this helps you have fun with your work. Go do something fun with it. Don't over obsess. And I hope you have a great time. I'd love to see what some of you are working on. Shoot me a DM, share with me your artwork, your struggles. I'd love to hear from you. This is really fun chatting with you. Let's do it again next week. I'll see you there. Bye.